good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to all of you in my SBL webinar for September 2023 attempt. This is the second day of the webinar. My name is Hassan Dosani. And yesterday, it was day one of this webinar series. And today is day two, the recording of yesterday and today will be uploaded on YouTube as well as Wifi's portal by tomorrow. Right, so I hope that you guys are doing well and I think we can start now. Yes, we can. So what is our strategy for two days? So yesterday, we covered the introduction to SBL. Then we spoke in detail about the pre-seen exam changes with effect from September. We discussed all the formats. We discussed the five professional skills and this one, the exam technique. This was a very important bit because due to the paper changes from September, there are certain changes to the exam techniques. So this is the revised exam techniques, keeping in mind the pre-seen paper. And then yesterday we also understood the techniques uh, of two students who scored 92 marks in SBL in March and June attempts, right? So today we will start with the technical articles and do a couple of question uh, practice and then we will try and wind up the session. All right. So how to ask questions? Again, I would like to remind you the way you can ask question is you can type your question in the chat box. And after every few minutes, I will go through your questions and answer them. But please, please make sure that your question pertains to the slide under discussion. If your question is outside the slide under discussion, I will not be able to answer it there and then. Then I will answer it towards the end of the session. Okay, that's my introduction, but the most important thing is basically my WhatsApp number. Those of you who don't have my WhatsApp number, you can save it and connect to me through WhatsApp in case you want to ask something privately. Also, I have global, uh, um, you know, WhatsApp group for SBL. So if you're already part of any of my global WhatsApp group, then it's okay. But if you're not part of the global group, then you can message at this number and you will be added to the group. Right. So let us start with today's agenda. And uh, today's main thing is technical articles, right? So there are around four technical articles. There are four technical articles. And uh, the first three are series like applications of new technology part one, application of new technology part two and application of new technology part three. The last part, part three, was published in April, whereas these two were published in October. And then very recently, a fourth article was published, um, which is on project management. It was published uh, last month. All right. So in my opinion, the, the second last and the last Articles are most important for September attempt, right? So this is these are the two articles which you need to focus on. Forget about the previous October articles. No need to worry about them. I'm pretty sure it's not it's not going to be tested. But the third and the fourth articles we will need to focus on. Okay. So this was part one. So I have just, you know, striked it out. Part one, part two, again, not important, but part three, application of new technology, part three, which was 
published in April of this year. It is about a topic called cloud computing. Can anybody tell me if you can, if you are a research student and if you gave the paper in June, did any question on cloud computing was there? Do you, can you recall anything on cloud computing in previous attempt? No. All right. So, all right. So basically, um, you know, uh, cloud computing is a, is a new terminology. Well, it's not that new. So in like five years, 10 years back, organizations and companies used to have their own physical server installed in their own premises, right? You know that all the data of the company, the everything is stored in servers, right? So previously, the old trend was that organizations used to have their own physical servers installed on their premises. But in the last five to 10 years, the concept of cloud computing has come, whereas organizations, they don't use their own servers. They use servers provided by cloud computing companies. And you can see uh, very good examples in your real life. Where is your email saved? Like if you have a Gmail account, where is the data? Can anybody tell me? If you have a Gmail account, where is it? Where is the actual data saved? In the drive? No. Which drive? In your physical drives? No, it's on the cloud. Where is Facebook? How do you access Facebook? Cloud. Exactly. So now we connect through uh, to the cloud through internet. <laughs> So we connect through internet, we log into our Gmail account, we log into our Facebook account, we log into our WhatsApp, all this is through internet, right? Internet connection. So those, all these data are saved somewhere in other person's server. So uh, Google's data, Gmail data is on Google server and we connect through internet, right? So this is called cloud computing that, you know, the, the, the companies, they don't have their own physical servers. Like in my company, we don't have physical servers. All our ERP and data and systems are on cloud. So we are using Microsoft cloud. We are using Google cloud. We are paying fees for that. And we are we connect to our data through internet. Wherever we are, it doesn't matter. We just need a laptop and internet. I mean, and we can connect into the company's uh, data on the cloud, right? <clears throat> there are certain advantages. There are certain disadvantages. So actually, I have discussed this topic in a lot of detail in my March 2023 webinar. So I want all of you to you know, uh, take a look at my March webinar because I really want to you know uh, not repeat stuff and give more time to the project management thing, which is a very lengthy topic. There are certain advantages of cloud computing. You can read it. It is pretty simple and self-explanatory. There are certain disadvantages. So from an exam point of view, I can expect a question, like it, a possible question might be that you know that that organization is considering to adopt cloud-based technology. What can be the advantages and what can be the disadvantages? Okay, so as long as you know what is cloud and if you know two, three, four advantages and two, three, four disadvantages, you all you need to do is just link with the scenario, link with the exhibit and draft your answer, right? Okay, so actually the main focus of today's webinar is project management, which was the latest technical article and project management is a very lengthy and slightly tricky topic. Okay, so I want to spend like at least one hour 
on discussing project management and doing a couple of questions on that. Okay, but before I start project management, just a very quick announcement that my revision classes are starting from 8th of August. Okay, we will be doing four full case studies. We will be doing three mocks. And these are the main highlights that I will check one mock. Then there will be a detailed discussion um, and practice of the pre-seen material. It's also included in this. And then there will be a grand revision three days before the paper. So this is a good, really exam focused session. And uh, the investment is uh, $100. And for Pakistan-based students, it's PKR 15,000, right? And this is the schedule of the revision classes. Almost every day there are classes. Um, so it's very intense and exam focused. Right, so project management. Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of project? What do you understand by the word project? Let's see. Let's type a short, what is a project? A special task, okay. A one-off task or activity, yes. Exactly, it's a one-off task or a special task. So it is not day-to-day -day operations. So the project is not day-to-day -day operations. Project is something unique, it is an extra one of tasks with a very specific objective or purpose. Project management means, can you think of, what is the meaning of project management? Read it in reverse, manage the project. So you think it is important to properly manage a project? Do you think it's important to that the project should be properly managed? Everybody is saying yes. Why is it important? <laughs> Why is it important to make sure that the project is properly managed? Why? Yes, there are some basic reasons. First of all, it is important to manage the project properly because so that the project objectives are achieved. Obviously, we are doing a project in order to achieve certain objective, right? There's some purpose behind the project. So if the project is not managed properly, then that objective will not be achieved properly, right? And then obviously, uh, extra time, extra resources, extra money is involved in project. We have to spend extra money. We have to devote extra resources to the project. So if the project is not managed properly, A, the objectives will not be achieved and B, company will waste extra money and time and resources. Right? So it's very important that proper project management is done. Okay, very clear. Now, all projects have three aspects. Or can I say for you to remember, project has three legs. So do you know of any animal which has four legs? Can you give me an example of any animal which has four legs? Dog, okay, cow, okay, lion, lion goat, yeah. Okay, now name any animal with two legs. Any animal with two legs. Hen, interesting. Kangaroo, interesting. Human, nice. Duck, okay. Very good. So I, I know there are animals with two legs. I know there are animals with four legs. And maybe multiple legs. I challenge you. Can you name an animal with three legs? Can you think of an, any animal with three legs? 
a disabled animal. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tortoise has three legs, right. So always remember there is one animal with three legs and it's called project. Okay, project has three legs. This is how you will remember. All right, right. Quality. Timelines or duration and cost. A project always has three aspects, three important components. The project quality, the build quality or the requirements of the project the timelines involved in the project and the cost involved in the project. So if any organization wants to manage its project properly, what things it should monitor? It should monitor the quality progress, it should monitor the timeline, and it should monitor the cost. These are the three important areas of any project and through these three areas, we actually supervise and monitor and keep a tight control on the project. Any questions? Quality, time, and cost. Yeah. All right. Let me rub all these. Okay. Now, I want you to understand this terminology. Post implementation review and post project review. Let's talk about this. Can you read and try to guess what it means? Post implementation review. Guys, can you please turn off your video cameras? Please just shut down your cameras, okay? Post implementation review so once the project is finished okay so all right let me uh, simplify it for you so there are two type of reviews one is called post project review and one is called post implementation review both are done after the project is finished clear let's go step by step please hold your comments Hold, hold your comment. So after the project is finished, there are two reviews which are done. One is called post project review. One is called post implementation review, PPR and PIR. Okay. Post project review, this one, the, the first one simply sees how the project was managed. It does not look at the outcome or the objectives. It just reviews whether proper project management techniques were used or not proper. Planning was done, proper reporting was done, problem solving was done, whatsoever. The focus of Post project review is just to see, just to check whether the project was properly managed or not. Okay. okay. So that if the project was not properly managed, it is lesson learned. And, in, in, and so that in the next future project, we do not make the same mistakes. We do proper or better project management. So the focus is on project management, how the project was managed. Okay. The second review, which is done after the project is finished, it is called post implementation review. Here, the focus is not on project management. It's not on how the project was managed. The focus here is to see whether the objective has been achieved or not. So as I said in the start that all project has a purpose. Every project has a purpose. 
there is a very specific objective due to which we are doing a project. So when we measure whether those objectives have been achieved or not, maybe it's at 100% achieved, maybe it is partially achieved, maybe it's not achieved at all. So when we look at how much objective has been achieved in actuals, that review is called post implementation review. Okay. Joe, Ben, can you please close off your camera? Let me see if I can close. He's causing some disturbance or distraction to students. Yeah, Joe, thank you. All right. So are we are we clear on these two terminologies? What is post in project review and what is post implementation review? In my opinion, this one is more important in the sense that it is here that we are checking whether the objectives are achieved or not. This is, you know, it is based on this that we decide whether the project was successful or failure. Okay. No, Yakub. It's it doesn't even if the project was properly managed, it doesn't mean that the objectives were achieved. For example, if the objective is that after the project our revenue will increase, if the revenue doesn't increase, then the objective is not met, right? So the objective is not only dependent on project management uh, steps. There are other factors also, right? All right. Now, the, let's come to this. So your technical article starts from here, okay? So this was all basic concept about the project, what is project, what is project management, but the actual technical article for which was published last month starts from here. So it starts with what are the key documents involved in any project, okay? What are the basic documents uh, used in project management. So the first and foremost document, it is called a business case. It's very simple. A business case provides justification for undertaking a project. Okay, that's why do we need a project? Obviously, right? There must be some purpose, some reason, some justification, some objectives. So the first document is a business case, which actually talks about the justification or reason why do we need to do this project? Because project involves time, resources, and money, right? So if the company, before it spends time and money, on the project, they want to know what's the reason. Is, is it really justified or not? So a business case evaluates the pros and cons of various options considered and provides rationale for selecting the preferred option. Okay, so So when we, when we do a project, so there are many options. For example, let me give you an example. It will become easy for you. If I want to, if my, if the accounting software in my company, if it is outdated, okay, in my company, uh, the accounting software is outdated now. So we are now thinking of uh, implementing a new ERP system, okay? So one option was that we implement SAP. The other option was we implement Oracle Financials. And the third option was we implement a system called 
premia. Okay, these are the three options. So, how do we decide which one should we go for? Any idea? There are three possible softwares available. How do we decide which one to go for? Quotations? Fuck, man. You sound like an accountant. Think like a CFO. Should I go for SAP? Shall I go for Oracle Financials? Or shall I go for Premia? How do I decide? I will look at the pros and the cons of each of them, right? I will look at my business requirements. I will look at my business requirements and I will analyze these three softwares and I will see which software fulfills maximum of my requirements. What are the technical requirements of each of the software? Do I have the hardware and the capability? Is there proper vendor support? What is the reputation of that software in the market? What other companies in my industry are doing? And of course the cost as well, but cost will be the last consideration. First, we always look at the qualitative side. Got it? So in simple layman terms, in simple layman language, when I'm talking to the board, can I say I will look at the pros and cons of each option? You know, because you can't go that technical with the board, right? So when I, when I go to the board, I will say there are, gentlemen, there are three possible options, A, B, C. These are the pros and cons of each option. And based on the pros and cons, I recommend option C. And this is the reason why I recommend option C. Does it make sense to you? Does it seem logical to you? If you are the board and I'm making a presentation, same, I will say these are the three options. These are the pros and cons of each option. And in conclusion, this is my recommendation. As a CFO, I feel that we should go for option C because of blah, 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 blah. And then let the board decide. They will discuss. They will ask questions and ultimately we all will sign off on the final selection. Done. So this, all this is done through a business case. All this is done through a document called business case, right? So what are the contents of a business case? It will start with the current situation. Current situation means you clearly clear identification and analysis of the problem. I will start by saying that, listen guys, our current accounting systems are, are outdated. These are the problems we are facing. These are the reports which we are not able to generate. It is it causing too much manual work. We are requiring too much employees because there are system limitations. So one slide, I will explain the problem. I will justify that we need a new system. And then on the next slide, I will evaluate the various options. I will tell them, okay, these are the three options. We, I will talk about the pros and cons of each option. I will talk about the feasibility of each options. What are the risks and constraints? But in simple words, pros and cons of each option. And then in the last slide, I will talk about the selected option or the recommended option in my view and why. Why am I suggesting options A or option B or option C? So there are, there are three broad contents of a business case, the current problem, what are the options available, and lastly, the suggested or the recommended option. Who prepares this document? It is prepared by the project sponsor and it is presented to the board for approval. Is the concept of business case clear? Just keep it very simple in your mind. A business case is a document 
through which we seek approval from the board. So it has a problem. We have to define the current situation. We have to talk about the various options and its pros and cons and risks. And lastly, I would, the sponsor would recommend which option he or she feels is the best for the company and why, and then let the board debate, let the board discuss in detail, and then ultimately the board will either approve or reject the proposal. That's how it works in the real world. Any questions on business case? Guys, any questions? This is very important topic, business case. It is the basic initial document based on which the board will debate, the board will discuss and will approve or reject. Good. It is not very technical document. It is, it is a high level, but strategic document talking about the current problem, talking about the various options available and then the pros and cons. So there was, let me give you one another real life example. Let's see whether you understand or not. Yes, Kaludia, Claudia, I will come to that. So I was working in Unilever many years back and Unilever have, you know, they have to, they have these, a lot of delivery vans, right? Because they have to, uh, deliver the products to all the retailers. Understood? So in when I was in Unilever, they had a lot of delivery vans, but those vans were now very old, more than 10 years old. There was a lot of breakdown, a lot of repair and maintenance, disruption in supply because the vans were lousy. Okay? So it was decided that we need 100 new delivery vans or trucks, or actually delivery trucks. And it's an expensive deal, right? If you want to buy 100 delivery trucks, it's a big deal. So what is the problem statement here? What is the problem statement? Can anybody tell me what is the current situation? Just a one liner, no need to elaborate. Yes, outdated delivery trucks leading to uh, you know, disruptions in the supply delays in the supply and very high repair and maintenance cost, even the risk of accidents or injuries to staff, right? That's the current situation. So we all know that now we need to replace the work, okay? Now, what are the options available? Obviously new man's vans, but what are the options available? So one option was we buy new trucks. The other option was we lease new trucks. So there are companies who provide, you know, trucks on finance lease or operational lease, or I don't know, whatever. So one option we is we outright buy all the trucks, but then we, there'll be a big cash outflow. The other option is that instead of buying all the trucks right away, we take it on installments or we, you know, take it on lease so that, you know, we don't have to pay a lot of cash upfront and we can pay in installments over next five years. But then there will be a financing cost, right? The, the third option was instead of buying or leasing, we outsource the entire delivery function to a specialized distribution company. Why do we need to buy trucks and then get into the hassle of maintenance and this and that? That's not our core business, maintaining fleets, right? So let's outsource the entire delivery to a specialist distribution company. 
These are the three options. Now, how do we decide which option is the best? We will look at the pros and the cons of each option in detail, right? The, the technical aspects, the qualitative aspects, the financial aspect, the cash flow aspect, the risk aspects. So then we did a thorough analysis of all the three options, the pros and cons. And then in the last slide as a CFO, we recommended which option, A, B, or C. And whatever option you recommend to the board, you will have to explain to them why you are selecting this option. And based on that, the board then discussed in detail, discussed in detail, and ultimately everybody agreed and they approved this project. <sighs> So I think uh, we selected the outsourced option. Yeah, we selected the outsourced option because now, you know, deliveries are becoming more and more specialized field. It's got its own complications. So instead of we want to manage our own fleet, we thought of outsourcing it to a proper, proper company who just specializes so it gives us, it provides us with expertise and uh, it was flexible. We can, you know, change the vendor anytime we want and all those things. Even the drivers and all those were those guys. All right? We got rid of our drivers. We got rid of all the overheads. Anyway, so now you understand the concept of business case. It's basically a justification for a project. We look at options and then we select the option and ultimately the board approves. Is that clear now? Keep it very simple. Huh? Don't complicate things. Keep it very simple. Now, the second document is called Project Initiation Document. This is the second document. Which one is the first document in any project management? Which one is the first document? A business case. Based on business case, the project will be either approved or rejected. Correct? In case the project is approved, the second document is PID. Project initiation document. Very simple, a PID is prepared after the business case is approved by the board. It is prepared by the project sponsor to communicate details of the project with the project manager and the project team. Understood? So the first document, which was the business case, was for the board was for the board. The second document, which is project initiation document, it is for the project manager and the project team. So the target audience is now different. Understood? This document, it includes the objectives of the project and summarized information from the business case so that the project manager and project team can understand what is expected from them because the project manager and the project team are the persons who are actually gonna execute the project, right? They will work on the project. So they need a good understanding of the project. What is the purpose? What is the objectives? What, is, what are they supposed to do? So this document, PID, it is basically prepared for the project manager and the project team so that they understand the project and they can focus and then execute or implement the project. Clear? Now you understand the difference between a business case and a PID. A business case is the first document and it is targeted towards the board so that they can 
approve the project. The second document is the PID. It is made after the approval is done. And the target audience is the project manager and the project team so that they can understand the project and what is supposed to be done so that they can execute it. Okay. What are the contents of a PID? So obviously there might be some background then project scope and objective. This is very important. Huh? Then there will be the cost benefit analysis will be there. That this will be the cost. This will be the outcome. This is your budget. Then you will identify who are the key stakeholders of that project. Stakeholder means people who are involved or affected by the project. So there could be internal stakeholders like project sponsor, project manager, project team, or the user or the concerned departments. In fact, even the, the board is a internal stakeholder, board of directors, okay? And depending on the project, there might be some external stakeholders like customers or suppliers or government or society. So this is a comprehensive list of possible stakeholders I have given. It will depend on the nature of the project. So we have to identify who are the key stakeholders of the project so that we can work closely with them. Understood? Project duration and timelines. This is very important that in the PID, the actual duration or deadline or timeline should be mentioned that this project needs to be completed in three months or six months or 18 months or five years whatsoever, depending on the project, but a clear timeline and deadline has to be mentioned so that the project team knows the deadline so that they can work accordingly in order to meet the deadline. What are the key risk projects risks? It's also mentioned in this document. What are the key constraints? If any, it's mentioned in the documents. Any major assumptions which have been used, that's mentioned. And lastly, project monitoring and reporting procedures that how the project will be monitored, how, what will be the progress monitoring, maybe monthly progress reports or quarterly progress. So all these aspects are covered or included in a PID so that the project's manager and the project team are very clear what they're supposed to do, how they are supposed to do, and ultimately what they are expected to achieve. You must be, you must memorize the contents of a PID. All right, got it? Now, what is the role of the this is again from the article, role of the project board or committee, what is the role of project sponsor? What is the role of project manager? So if you look at this graph, is this diagram, this is from your article. So this is the you know normal hierarchy of any project, there will be a board. It can be the board of directors or they might have a smaller board or something, the board, then underneath the board, there will be a project sponsor. Underneath the sponsor, there will be a project manager. And underneath the project manager, there will be a project team. This is the standard hierarchy of any project. The board on the top, then the sponsor, then the manager, and then the team. What is the role of the board? Very simple, it ensure business case is justified, approve the business case, and approve any major decisions and oversight of the project. 
this is what we did in business case, right? They need to make sure that it is really justified that we spend time and money on it, approve the business case in the best interest of the company, and then, you know, oversee the oversight of the project to make sure that it is on track and it is completed and the objectives are achieved. What is the role of a project sponsor? A project sponsor provides senior leadership and guidance to the project manager. So a lot of students are confused who is a sponsor. A sponsor is the person who is ultimately responsible and accountable for the project. Okay, I will repeat. A sponsor is a person who is ultimately, he is the final authority who is, who will be, who is accountable, responsible and accountable for the success or failure of the project. Normally, a sponsor is a very senior person in the organization and 99% he is one of the directors. Normally, if the project is big, then the sponsor is the concerned director. For example, if it's a financial project, the finance director or CFO will be the sponsor. If it is a marketing related project, then marketing director will be the sponsor. The concern director will be the sponsor. If it's a HR related project, who will be the sponsor? HR director. Yeah, normally the executive directors, not the non-executive, okay? Okay, so let's go back to the Unilever example where we had to replace all the trucks. Right? Who do you think was the sponsor for that project in which we have to replace all the trucks? CFO? No. How is it a finance project? No. Hmm. Some people are saying the logistics director. Some people are saying the operational director. Absolutely correct. Some people uh, in, so in, in Unilever, we had a separate department called supply chain. Supply chain deals with, you know, the physical. So the supply chain director was the concerned person because the trucks comes under supply chain department. So whatever is the concerned department, that director will become the sponsor. Understood? So what is the role of a sponsor? Provide senior leadership and guidance to the project manager, arrange the resources required for the project, whatever human resource, financial resource, he will arrange that from the company monitoring the progress and ensuring that project is on track. That is the job of sponsor. Problem solving in case there's any problem or issue, he will make sure that it is resolved and ultimately is accountable to the project board or the, or the committee or whatever. Do you think... So basically, just remember, a sponsor is a senior person, most likely one of the directors who is basically leading the project. His job is to provide strategic guidance and leadership to the team, to monitor, to make sure that the project is on track, and to make sure that the objectives are achieved ultimately. If the project is successful, who should we reward? If the project is successful, who should we reward? The sponsor, yes, because he is the person who is leading the project. And if the project is flopped, who should we punish? Again, the sponsor, because he is the person leading the project. If he fucks up the project, the board will fuck him. 
Understood? The sponsor is the person who is leading the, strategically leading the pre-initiative. Serious thing. Do you think the project sponsor should have technical expertise? Not necessarily. Okay. It will help, obviously. But the role of project sponsor is not a technical day-to-day -day role. What's more important is he should have maturity and strategic knowledge of the project. Basic technical knowledge is required, but he doesn't need to have very high technical expertise. Technical expertise is the job of project manager. The project manager must be technically qualified and experienced. Okay. So what is the role of a project manager? Detailed project planning and execution. The day-to-day -day running of the project. Monitoring the project team. Ensuring project is on track and he is reporting to the project sponsor. Okay, so project manager, it is very important that he must have the required technical skills and experience for that kind of a project. The sponsor does not necessarily have to have high level of technical skills. Basic understanding is more than enough, but he is supposed to have more of strategic and managerial leadership capabilities. Again, this is all from the article. So are you guys very clear on the role of project board, on the role of project sponsor, and on the role of project manager? Good. I have one last question just to see whether you guys understood or not. I have one question. Let's see if you are able to answer it or not. Can anybody tell me project sponsor and project manager are two different persons or the same persons? There are two different person or is it the same person? Yes, absolutely correct. Project manager and project sponsor are two different persons. Now, can, is it a good idea if one person is both the sponsor as well as the manager? Can one person do both, the same person do both the roles? No. Why? Give me three reasons. Why you are saying that the same person cannot be the sponsor as well as manager at the same time? Good. I like it. Nice. All right. So the first reason is these are two different roles. These are two different roles. The role of sponsor is ABC. The role of project manager is XYZ. These are two different roles. So it's, it's like, uh, it's, you know, there is no segregation of duty. Hey, who's this, guys? Joey, be careful. So there's no segregation of duty, right? So if it is the same person, then who will monitor the project manager? Who will monitor the project manager? No one, right? There is no segregation of duty. There is no oversight, right? Lack of supervision, yes. Lack of monitoring. Secondly, I think the, the technical expertise, so the sponsor should have more of 
strategic skills and the project manager should have more of technical skills. One person might not have both the skills, right? So there might be some compromise on the quality or the technical skills. Yeah, it's bad governance, no segregation of duty, too much power with one person. The skills required are different. The roles are different. Very good, guys. All right, guys. So here we end the basic concept of project, project management, project roles. To Just to summarize, a project is a one-off special activity with a very specific purpose or objective. Okay. The basic, the first document which is prepared in any project management is called business case. The purpose of business case is to justify the project and to seek approval from the board. Once the, the target audience of business case is the board of directors. Once the project is approved, the second document which is prepared is called project initiation document. The target audience of this document is the project manager and the project team so that they know the details of the project so that they can execute it. Okay. And lastly, what are the, what the role of the board is to approve the project and to oversight the project. The role of sponsor is to provide strategic leadership guidance to the project manager, project team. Uh, to monitor the project, to make sure it project completes on time, to make sure the objectives are achieved, to solve the problems. He is ultimately responsible and accountable for the project. And the role of a manager is to do the day-to-day -day activities like detailed planning, technical work, make sure the team is working, make sure the project is on track. That's it. Please do not overcomplicate uh, this, right? Just keep this basic concept in your mind. Right, so now let's do one question. Please, can you open up your CBE platforms? I will be doing uh, SBL September 2018 paper called COFOL construction. We will do question number two on your CBE platform. It is under practice exam library and it is practice exam number one. So please open up your CBE platform go and open up practice exam number one. There is no break, my friend. I'm not going to give break in between. It is namaz in your city. It's not namaz time here or anywhere else. So please understand it's a global group. There'll be just one break. Sorry for that. Guys, are you ready with your CBE platform? Please open up SBL practice exam number one. I'll uh, give you 10 more seconds. Please open up your CBE platform so that you can do the question along with me. All right, so we will do question number two. 
So all questions in SBL have three components. Okay. All questions in SBL have three components. One is the background. This is the background. This first portion is the background. This is an unbold. Then the second portion is the technical requirement, which is this one, which is worth 14 marks in this case. And the third component is professional skills, which is worth four marks. So this question number two in total marks is 14 plus four, 18 marks. Okay. So I repeat, there are three components of the requirement in all SBL questions, a background, technical requirement and professional skills requirement. It is very, very important to read the backgrounds because A, you will understand the requirement, the context of the requirement and B, certain information is sometimes provided in the background which you can use in your answer. So never skip the background, okay? So can you please read from here to here? I give you one minute, time starts now. All right. So basically it says CC has been awarded the contract to build the road in Beetle, okay? So we have now got a contract. It's a road construction contract. So we, we need to build a road in Beetle. It is January 20X2. You are Joe Isa, the project manager for the construction of the road in Beetle. So our role has been defined. In this scenario, you are not an accountant. You are not the CFO. You are the actual project manager of this road construction project. Understood? So you need to think like a project manager that if you are managing this project, all right? Then Oliver Visonga, who is a junior member, let me see, Oliver Visonga, who is a junior member of the project team, began to draft the project initiation document during the time when no one was acting as project manager. So there was some turnover, the previous project manager has gone and you have joined after one month. But in that meantime, some junior project manager, junior member of the project team, he has tried to prepare a project initiation document. And now he has given it to you for your review. Understood? Now, tell me one thing. This new, this junior member of the project team has prepared the project initiation document. Would you expect any errors or omission? What do you think? Yeah, I would, I would imagine, I would assume that, you know, because he's a junior member, um, maybe there might be some error or omission. All right. So what is the requirement? Prepare a memo addressed to Oliver, which critically evaluates the outline contents and the summary of issues in the project initiation document, which he has prepared and recommend improvement. So basically you have to identify the, you know, issues or shortcomings or errors in the document. And then after identifying the shortcomings or errors or issues, you need to then give certain recommendation or guidance to that person so that he can fix it. Understood? Right. Now I saw some comments. 
uh, that you know the it is the job of the sponsor to prepare a PID. You're absolutely correct, but in this organization, you know the project manager was preparing the PID. I don't know why, but this is the situation, right? So don't get confused. We need to follow the exhibit. Theoretically, we you are right, but some I don't know why. The project team is preparing uh, this. Uh, I don't know, but this is what it is, right? All right. Now it says, the what is the format required? Memo, good. Is it a question like weakness and recommendation? Because you have to, you're supposed to identify the, the shortcomings and give recommendation. Yeah. So can we use a tabular format? As per yesterday's class, that when there is a weakness and recommendation, we use a tabular format. Okay, we will use a tabular format. Can anybody tell me how many shortcomings am I supposed to identify? How many shortcomings are we supposed to identify? Shit, man, I don't know. People are saying seven. I think you guys didn't attend yesterday's class. So if you have missed yesterday's class, keep your mouth shut. Four to five. Yes. How do we calculate number of points? Total marks, 14 plus 4 is 18. 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. So minimum 4, maximum 5 weaknesses we need to identify depending on the availability of information and then give the recommendations. All right, 4 or 5. Let's go to professional skills. We need to demonstrate skepticism skills. You remember exactly what was skepticism skill we discussed yesterday? We challenge, we ask questions, we disagree, we probe. Good. But what I want to show you is that this sentence, which is after this skepticism, this is very, very important sentence. These extra lines is basically the guidance given to you by the examiner, what you need to do in order to score skepticism. This guidance is very important and we have to follow it. Demonstrate skepticism skills in what? In discussing the shortcomings. So you need to discuss the shortcomings and recommending improvements. So as long as you identify the shortcomings, use slightly negative tone and then give the recommendations, automatically you will get skepticism marks. Okay. Right. So the next step is we quickly make the skeleton of this answer before we start the actual drafting. Remember I discussed yesterday that before we start, we have to make a skeleton. My paid batch students, they already know how to make a skeleton. So let's make the format and let's give the broad headings. Time starts now. So I've opened my Word document. I will write, uh, what is the format? Memo. To, from, subject, date, introduction, and then the closure. Best regards. To, where can I find to from here? Oliver, from Joe Isa. 
If the name is provided, we will join subject. We'll pick up the key sentence project initiation document. Let's pick this subject. Date, date has been provided, I think. It is January 20X2. Introduction, this memo, and then I will copy paste. And then best regards and then Joe Isa, I will copy and put my name in the end. Done, your skeleton is ready. Yes, Akbar, no Stephanie, the date has been provided. So we need to use that date. Yes, and in the real exam, you will also write the ending time in the towards the end so that you know you calculate the ending time. Because right now we are not doing oh, what's the so I will make a table as well. Two column and several rows. I will write here. I will select bold and center. So now it looks professional. So this is my format. My skeleton is ready. On the top, it says memo to Oliver Vasanga from Joe Isa subject project initiation document. Date is January X2. Introduction, this memo critically evaluates the outline contents and operational issues in the project, which he has prepared. No, which you have prepared and recommends improvement. So as you see, I slightly changed because I'm addressing this memo to the gentleman himself. Then there are shortcomings on the left side and recommendations on the right side and then the closure. Any questions on the format? Evaluate? What do you mean evaluate? Okay, I understood. So the question says critically evaluate. So what do you mean by evaluate? This gentleman was asking a question um where is that the someone asked do we need to evaluate what do you mean no Pros and cons, no, 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 no. I'll tell you why. Read the requirement. So first of all, yesterday we discussed that when the professional skills says evaluation skill, we will show pros and cons, agreed? But what is the professional skill here? Skepticism. So yesterday what we discussed about evaluation skill was from a professional skills point of view. You see? So don't mix this with the technical requirement. When it says professional skills in under professional skills requirement, then definitely pros and cons. But if it is mentioned here, then it is a different thing. Right, it doesn't follow the professional skills thing. That's number one. And secondly, it says critically evaluate. Critically means criticize, negative. So you know, you know, identifying the issues, the errors. So that's it. 
do not mix pros and cons because that pros and cons belong to professional skill it has to be in this paragraph not here all right okay now our format is ready skeleton is ready now i want you to read so which exhibit you think will be more relevant to this go through the list of exhibits and let's see whether you are able to identify which exhibit is more relevant or most relevant five absolutely correct outline contents of a pid so this gentleman has prepared the pid you are reviewing it so so who has prepared this document remind me who has prepared this exhibit the junior member yes what has he done he says outline contents of project initiation document these are the contents of his document and then he is saying summary of operational issues and then he's mentioned some operational issues and then he's mentioned some key risks here and that's it so this document has been prepared by this gentleman these are the contents of his document and then he's also talked about some operational issues and then he has talked about some main risks can you go through the first section first and try to identify is this is the pid includes everything or has he missed out anything go through his list of contents and compare with our standard list of contents of a pid and try to identify whether he has missed out on something or not No, Shiraz, business case is another document. Come on. We are looking at PID now. Please have a look at the contents of a PID. Here. This is the contents list of the contents of PID, right? These things should be there in PID. So compare this list with whatever he has done and try to identify whether he has missed out anything. All right, so let's see. He's introduced, he has some, he's put an introduction. Introduction is there. Background is there. Business case like benefits, cost, progress, payments is there. Okay. Financial budget, financial aspects are there. Good. Time and cons constraints are there. Risks are there. Sponsor is there. Manager is there. What has he missed out? So if I look at the list, background is there. Yes, it's there. Project scope and objective, is it there? Did you see a specific heading called project scope and objective? No. So I will say this. So to me, this one is missing. Cost benefit analysis is there. Financials are there. Yeah, who's saying no? Idiots. 
It says business case, benefits, cost, progress payments, financial budgets, funding. Yeah, cost benefit is there. E stakeholder. So sponsor is there, manager is there, but he is not talked about project team, he's not talked about the user department. So the key stakeholder is basically incomplete. He just have two people mentioned. But what about the other possible stakeholders, right? That's missing, right? Agreed? Yeah, external stakeholders are missing. So, okay. What else is there? So project duration and timelines. Did you see project duration and timelines? Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. Where is the timeline? Those who are saying there is a timeline on next page. Okay. Okay. So right now, where is the time and cost constraint? That's another thing. Constraint is a sub. So I don't see duration. Okay. So I will say this is missing. Risk is there. Yeah. Constraints are there. Yeah. Major assumptions used. No. Project monitoring and reporting procedures. No. So I think what are missing? Project, project scope and objective is missing. Oops, what happened? Project scope is missing. Let me make a list. What else is missing? Got it? These are the five things which I think are missing and I just gave the small headings. Project team uh, is key stakeholders. And the project team is part of stakeholders, right? So I will cover that under stakeholders. Now, I want you to read and understand this section. Now, this is a common sense thing. This is not taught in any syllabus or subject or topic. I just want you to go through it and use your intelligence and your common sense. If you are the CFO and someone gives this to you, try to make some sense out of it. Please understand this. I give you two minutes. No comments now. Yes, I'm coming to that. No comments, please. Two minutes. I want pin drop silence and just look at this data. Once you are done, please type done.
30 more seconds. Imagine that you are a project manager, okay? Keep that in mind. You are not an idiot student. You are a project manager. So you are reviewing this. So take command. All right. How many of you did not understand this? Please write me. No other comments. How many of you did not understand this portion? I'm worried about you guys. I'm worried about you guys, okay? Because 50% of SBL is common sense, things like this. So you need to have that sharpness or street smartness in you, okay? So I'm also looking at this for the first time. So it says cost and time constraints for stages of construction. What is the meaning of stages of construction? construction what is the meaning of stages of construction stages yeah phases so we are building a road in beetle and so this guy has this project has been broken down into four stages the first stage of the construction is from gamville to omicon that's the first stage of the construction from Gamville to Omicron. When it will start, what's the duration of the first stage? It will start in May X2 and it will finish in May, April X3. And what is the cost? I think this is the cost, 4.7 billion for the first stage of construction. The second stage then starts from Omicron and will finish in a place called Nuhasa. It will start in Feb of X3 and finish in April X4 and the cause, the third stage and the fourth stage. Understood? So this guy has just broken the entire project into four stages. He's given the name of the cities and he has given the duration of each stage and the cost of each stage. Understood? So what was so complicated in this? Nothing. It was plain common sense. Now, can anybody tell me what the hell is this? What is M-J-J-A-S-O-N? Any idea about M-J-J-O-S-A-N? What are these, these abbreviations? Months. Very good. So this is what, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, these are months and these are years. X2, X3, X4, and this should be X5, I think, right? right. So what are these lines? What has he done? He has just plotted this duration on a graph. So stage one is from May X2 to April X3. So May till April. Stage two starts in Feb and so it starts from here, ends here, starts here, ends here. I think it's pretty simple. It's a graphical presentation. In technical language, it is called Gantt chart, but forget about it. Okay. So now some students are saying there is a time conflict meaning that there are some overlapping tasks. That's that's all right. Uh, you know, the stages, they sometimes run in parallel as well. So when this stage is about to end, work on the second stage has already started. So that's nothing wrong in that, okay? There is no hard and fast rule that 100% the stage will complete, then only you can start. No, there will be overlapping or parallel stages as well. That's very normal. All right. So now, can I ask you a very simple question? When is the 
project what is the project start date what is the project start date jan fuck you may 2000 x2 because that's when the first stage is starting in may and that's where the graph is also starting so the project start date is may what is the project ending date december x5 good What is the total duration of the project in terms of years and months? Three years and seven months. Four years? No, give me exact. It is three years and seven months. Or is it eight months? Eight months, right, yeah. May, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, three years and eight. Can you please write three years and it's not 3.8 years. Can you write three years and eight months? Good. So now you know the duration of the project. Do we know the deadline duration and the timelines and the deadline? Good. So I will go back to my sheet and I will delete the project duration point. I will select the row, write row, delete row, done. All right. Now, Let's do some drafting. Okay, we've identified the points that the project scope is missing, the key stakeholders are missing, major assumptions are missing, government, governance stakeholders and monitoring is missing. Let's talk about the first one. Project scope and objective is missing. So what should be your opening statement? Opening statement should be a statement of fact. Uh, opening statement should be a statement of fact. So what should be an opening standard? Opening statement. What's wrong in project and objective here? What will you tell him? No, Yakub, you are addressing this memo to the junior himself. No, Joey, what the fuck are you doing? Yes. Uh, Ashwin, it's a bit harsh. Can I write? This is how I will write to the junior. When I am reviewing his document and if I, if I find some error, this is how I will start. The PID does not include project scope and objective. That's a statement of fact. Or you can say that the scope and objective is missing from your document. No. Okay, that's a statement of fact. Now, is it important to to include scope and objective in a PID? Why? What will happen if the scope and objective is not there? What's the impact? No direction. Good, no target, lack of visibility. We really don't know what we are supposed to achieve. 
What is the purpose? How will we monitor? So just explain to him that okay, I will read. If scope and objective is missing, I'm talking about the impact now. There will be no clarity regarding the purpose of the project. It will not be possible to monitor the project. And in the end, we will not know whether the project achieved the objective or not. Is it simple English, layman? Or skepticism, there is skepticism. So let me ask a question. I just changed uh, my drafting a bit in a questioning tone that how will we monitor the project and ensure that objectives is achieved in case the objective is missing. This is how I talk to my subordinates. No nonsense, right? If, if there's a, something missing, I will ask him, then why is it missing? How will we do this monitoring if this is not there, idiot? You see, this is skepticism. Yes, Nafisa, you are theoretically right, but this is what it is. So you understood the drafting. There are several aspects. So number one, there is a subheading. Number two, I started with a statement of fact first. Number three, I gave the impact, you know, trying to explain why it is important to include objective. So you need to talk about the impacts or the problems we will face if the objectives are not there. And lastly, I deliberately drafted in a questioning tone to score skepticism. There are four things I did. Small heading, statement of fact, the impact, and a questioning tone. The questioning tone was is only there because I need to score skepticism. Yes, blessing, that's absolutely correct. All right, now what do you recommend to this guy? So he will ask you, okay, sir, now what do I do? So what will you tell him? All right, so the one way is right. Please include scope and objective in the project initiation document. document. But do you think this is enough for two marks? Because this is two marks. Do you think this sentence is enough? Right? That common sense says that, you know, <laughs> if everything is included and if we, if we start writing all this here, in this also, we will say, please include key stakeholders. Here we will say, please include major assumptions. Please include governance and monitoring. Examiner is not stupid. This is not worth two to eight marks, right? So how can we elaborate a bit more? Can we suggest or draft an objective for him? Let's teach him. Okay, let's draft an objective for him.
is to what is the scope and objective of the project it's provided in the requirement itself if you read the background story build the road in beetle what is the contract about it is a contract to build the road in beetle you see that is why it's important to read the background the scope and objective of the project is to build the road in beetle is there any timeline is there any timeline because an objective has to be smart specific measurable time bound what is the ending date or starting date Correct? Is there a budget? Is there a cost? Is there a maximum budget or cost? 19 billion? Where did you get that from? Yeah, if you add, if you add the costs, this is 19 billion. Done. The scope and objective of the project is to build the road in Beetle, which will start in May X2 and complete in December X5 and within maximum budget or cost of dollar 19 billion. So we actually drafted an objective for him so that he can look at it and use it in the revised draft, right? Understood? Yes, uh, Shimutai, yes, you can. Guys, is that clear? All right, let's do one more. Key stakeholders are missing. Which stakeholders are missing? Um, yes, Yusuf, you can. Let's talk about internal stakeholders. I think the board is missing. The project team is missing. What about external stakeholders? So this is a government project. There's no customer. The customer is government because, because you have not read the scenario. I will just tell you that it, it is the government who is giving us this contract. So our customer is actually the government. So you think government is an important stakeholder? And what about the Beetle community, the people who are living in those areas, they will be affected? Good. Now, my question, so what's the statement of fact? Why you have, have you not included other stakeholders? Why did I ask this questioning tone? Because of skepticism. Now, why is it important to identify stakeholders? Tell me, what is the impact if we don't identify stakeholders? What's the problem? Why do we need to identify the stakeholders? Why? No, no, 
No. Satisfy the stakeholders. Very good. Meet their expectations. Understand their expectations and then make sure that their expectations or requirements are fulfilled. Very good. Guys, keep it very simple, okay? It's not about communication and this and that. Very simple. It is important to identify key stakeholders so that we are able to understand their needs or concerns. And then we try to fulfill their expectations and concerns and address their concerns. Is that clear? No fancy. The purpose to the reason why we have to identify all key, key stakeholders is that we can understand their requirements and then we make sure that we satisfy them or fulfill their requirements. Or if they have any issues or concerns, we make sure that we address those concerns. That's it. Don't talk about communication or claims. Stick to basics. That's all I will write here. That's it. That's the impact. SBL is all about impact, the reasons, the impact. What will happen if we don't do this? If we don't identify key stakeholders, we will not be able to understand their requirements and expectations. And hence, we will not be able to satisfy them or address their concerns. Understood, guys? So now what do you recommend? Do we have a, can we recommend what, which stakeholders he should include? Just to get two marks. So let's give him a list of stakeholders. Please include the, uh, which one? The board. Project team, uh, government of Beetle, Beetle community, maybe suppliers. That's it. Enough list. So now this is good for two marks. We are actually applying our knowledge on the scenario and giving you know recommendation according to the scenario. Yes, Yusuf, you can, if it is not repetitive. All right, the third one is major assumptions. Let's delete this because it is difficult to explain this in the exam. And also there is no information available so that we will not be able to link with the case. Okay, so from an exam point of view, you might get stuck in this. So let's skip this. Let's talk about project governance and monitoring. So what will be the openings, opening uh, sentence, statement of fact? Tala, I'm coming to it. What will be the opening sentence for project governance and monitoring? You have not 
identified ways and methods the project will be governed and monitored. Okay, very good. That's your opening sentence, that there is no project governance and monitoring procedures defined in your document. So what will go wrong? What's the impact when there is no governance and monitoring procedures defined? What will happen? Control issue, yes. How would we monitor the, how would we, how the board will govern the project, how the sponsor will monitor the project. We will not know when, how the project is progressing. It might lead to increase in cost. It might lead to delay in the deadlines. There are no, if there is no monitoring controls, then the project is on its own, right? How do we control a project? How many legs it has? How many legs? Three legs. What are the legs? Which legs? Quality, time, and cost. All these things needs to be controlled and monitored. The quality of the project, the timeline of the project, the costs of the project, there should be proper reporting mechanisms. Otherwise, the project will get out of control. It will not finish on time. It will increase the budget. It might not fulfill the requirements. It will be flop. It will be a failure. Can you explain this in the impact in short words? So you will say that when there is no governance and monitoring procedures, it will be not possible to monitor the project in terms of quality, time, and cost, and the project might not meet the objective and might overrun the deadline and might overrun the costs. Okay? Now, what do you suggest? What do you suggest now? Come on, mama. Come on. What do you suggest? All right. So I will teach you one thing. That the most important controlling mechanism in any project, it is called progress report. It is called progress report. Please type, what is it called? Progress report. The most important monitoring and controlling document in any project, it is called the progress report. It contains all the relevant information regarding quality, time and cost. What was the budget? What is the actual so far? Is there any favorable or unfavorable variance? What is the reason? What is the action plan? How are we gonna fix it? What are the major issues? So progress report is a very comprehensive report which contains all the relevant information which is required to govern and monitor the project. So what should be in your view, the frequency of this progress report? Normally it is monthly, it can be quarterly, depending on the duration and the speed of the project. So this is a three, almost three years, eight months project. You want monthly or quarterly? A quarterly progress, that's also fine. Monthly is also fine. It depending how tightly you want to control. Right. So what do we recommend now? I have given you enough hint. What do we recommend now? What will you tell this guy? That please include proper governance and monitoring procedures such as the, the progress, monthly progress report. To whom we will send the progress report to? To the sponsor, the progress report should be sent to the sponsor and maybe to the board as well, because it's a big project. Yeah. 
So can you draft this in two, three lines? That there should be proper monitoring procedures such as a monthly progress report should be there, which should be sent to the project sponsor and to the board. All right. Yes, you can talk about variance and deviations. Good. So you see, it's a common sense things, very basic layman progress reports, frequency, to whom it should go, it should identify variances and all those things. Okay. No, it's it's part of execution, but it will be mentioned in the project planning stage. No? Then it will be executed. All this is part of PID. When, when there is something in PID, then it will be implemented. Now we've got three points. You know? We need four at least. We will have fourth point, but we have not read the entire exhibit, right? So there's a third portion as well. But because we are not into risks, but I will just discuss very high level. I will, I'm not going to do this right now, but just to give you an idea that you have to read the entire exhibit. So the third thing is included is the main risk. He has talked about health and safety risks. He's talked about supply chain risks. He's talked about environmental risk. Don't you think there will be other risks as well? What about financial risk? What about, so there's a whole list of risks. So the fourth point will be that, you know, your risks are not complete. You have not identified all key risks. And it's important and we can say that, you know, for example, financial risk, uh, business integrity risk, business risk, I don't know, currency risk. Just give a couple of examples. Reputational risk, very good. Political risk, very good, because it's a government project. So there's a political risk is there. The reputational risk is there. All right. So is it important to identify all risks? Why? Why do we need to know all possible risks? Why do we need to know all possible risks in advance so that we can mitigate them? We can try to prevent them or mitigate them or to take action so that, you know, we are, we, those risks don't happen. Very good impact right all right guys done so i will now wind up this project monitoring so a lot of things we learned today number one we understood the format we understood the skeleton then when we draft always start with a subheading always start with a statement of fact and then explain the impact on the business. Try to give relevant recommendations according to the scenario, practical recommendation. And because there was skepticism, I used question marks or I used a slight negative tone. Any questions? Because it's, you know, we, we, I have very short time in the webinar. So you see in my revision class, which will start on Tuesday, we will be doing all these things in detail. We will spend like eight hours on one case study. That's a, a lot, right? Eight hours on one case study. And we will be doing like four case studies. So you will, I hope you are able to see the benefit of this class. I just showed you a little bit of flavor. This is what we will do in the revision class. So if you are not yet enrolled, I really, if you found this useful and helpful, then I really, really 
would suggest that you consider joining the revision batch because this skill you will improve with break. All right, guys. Uh, do you have, are you very clear with project management? You understand the basic concepts? What are the basic documents? How you draft? Because I think because it came in the recent technical article, I think it will be an important topic for your exam. All right. So I suggest that after the webinar, you try to do this question properly and try after the webinar, try to do this question properly. Try to solve it, draft it so that you get a better grip over it. Okay. okay. Now, do you want to do a very small question on project management? There's one more question in your exam. exam. There is one more very small question in your exam. Do you want to do it? Okay. So now our very, another question is on the roles. So please, uh, uh, this quest study is March, June, 2021. It is called NCCP. Question number four B. So in your CB platform, past exam library paper March, June, 2021. I will open it in my CB. March, June, 2021. Okay, you don't open on your CB. It's a straightforward uh, thing. Task number 4B. Can you please read this background first? Background to the requirement. Can you please read this background first? And then read requirement B. Uh, we will not do requirement A. We will directly jump to requirement B. Ten more seconds. All right, so I will just read. The CEO is concerned about NCCP's exposure to cyber security risk and has instructed the operations director to both sponsor and manage a project to improve cyber security. Understood? 
the operations director has limited experience of cybersecurity and has asked you to help prepare a response. Okay. Draft an email which explains why it would be appropriate for him to be the project sponsor, but not both the sponsor and the project manager for this project. Do you understand the requirement? The CEO, he wants to initiate a project to improve the cyber security and he has asked the operations director to be both the sponsor as well as the project manager for this project. And you have to draft an email to justify why this is not a good idea. So, one reason is already mentioned in the, in the background to the requirement. Did you identify that reason? One reason is already mentioned here that why it's not a good idea. What is that reason? Very good. So, you know, this project died. So, you know, if we go back to the to the lecture, project sponsor should have strategic leadership experience, not necessarily full technical competence, but for the project manager, the project manager should have proper expertise and experience of the project, right? So, if this guy is both the sponsor and the manager and he has limited experience, what will happen? If he has limited experience of cybersecurity, what can go wrong? What's the impact? Yeah, he will not be able to do the project manager role because that requires technical expertise about the subject which he doesn't have. So he will not be able to execute the project. Just be simple, forget about bad decision-making or he will not be able to execute the project because he doesn't have the technical expertise. Tell us. All right. What is the other reason you can think of? What about segregation of duty or these are two different roles? You think you can uh, talk about segregation of duty? There will be a conflict of interest. There is a problem of segregation. No, don't talk about fraud, fraud idiot. There is no segregation of duty. There could be a conflict of interest because you know the role of sponsor is to monitor the project manager and the team. But if he's the same person, then you know there is no monitoring, there is no governance, there is no accountability, you know. Understood? These are two different roles. If one person is doing both the roles, then there is a conflict, right? There is no supervision or monitoring. What about the third point? We need Three points because it's six marks. Third point. No, Taha, that's too much uh, audit terminology. Too much power, no. Reporting accountability, no, no. What about time? So project manager will have to give a lot of time, right? It's the job of the project manager, day-to-day -day working on the project, the team, the task, the deadline, the problem. So it's a full-time job. Project manager, manager is a full-time job. It is, requires a lot of time. So do you think the operations director who is responsible for the operations of the entire company, will he be able to give full time to 
project security. If he gives full time to this project, then what will happen to his other tasks? Isn't that logical? Common sense? SBL is half common sense. You will say that, you know, since you are a project operations director, you are responsible for all operational activities of the of NCCP and uh, project manager is a full-time role. It will take a lot of time and effort. So you will not be able to give uh, full time to the project. Otherwise your other tasks will suffer. Fuck man, what is cost benefit analysis here? I mean, you guys just don't think. He cannot, he will not be able to perform his strategic role. Yeah, that's better. Nafisa, that's the same thing. Okay, the, understand the, the, the concept, the gist, not get stuck with words, okay? When he doesn't have the experience, he doesn't have the expertise. How, how stupid is that? Lack of reporting? I mean, you guys are using audit, audit language, which is not good. Guys, do you understand now? Because now your arguments are going into a stupid direction. Very simple. Three points for six marks. Number one, lacks expertise. Number two, there is no segregation of duty. Number three, uh, he will not have the time. That's it. Just keep SBL simple. Don't understand this. It's simple and basic. The more you try to add fancy words and fancy points, you will go in the wrong direction. Basic stuff. Okay. All right. So I think my, in my view, this was a high scoring question because there was not a lot of technical thing. There was no exhibit, only this information is there. So I can just think from common sense that number one, he doesn't have the expertise. Number two, there is no segregation of duty. There'll be no monitoring. And number three, he will not have the time to devote to the project because he is an operations director. That's it. Easy. The moment you start complicating things, the moment you start overthinking, you will get off track. Entire SBL is basic common sense. Stick to basic. When you try to think more and write more, you will also overrun the time. For six marks, you have not even 10 minutes to think and write and make the format of email. Basics and simple, two-liner, three-liner, all right? That's the secret. Okay. All right, guys, so let's move on. So we are done with project management and we do, did two questions. One, the first one was pretty comprehensive, uh, intense question. And number second question was quite small. There is one more question in SBL. I did not include that, but it was about, please discuss the roles of project sponsor. If I remember, it was discuss the role of a project sponsor six marks. Will you be able to discuss the role of a project sponsor for six marks? Yeah, it's there in my notes, right? Provide strategic leadership, arrange resources, monitor the progress of the project, solve problems, responsible and accountable to the board. Done. So now I'm in the last portion of today's webinar. I'm, I'm trying to wrap up things now. As I said, in the last four weeks, you should only focus on top 25 topics. That's it. Forget about the rest. Okay. So this is a list of important models. 
these are around uh, 10 models. You should be familiar with this list of models. So if you see cultural web is there. And in last attempt, there was a question on culture and a lot of students, they struggled probably because they did not follow this list. If you had studied cultural web, you would have been able to at least attempt 50% of the question, right? So please focus on these 10 models and please focus on these 15 topics, okay? So in total 25, top 25 includes the 10 models and these 15 topics. Please, you can you watch all this I have covered in my top 25 important topic video on YouTube is publicly available. And also I have a handout for these top 25 videos. All this is publicly available and it's also in my Google Drive. So number one, please, focus on top 25 topics and rest of the time on CBE platform practice, clear? Now I will just quickly recap so that we can you know, uh, revise what we did. So most important thing is the exam techniques which we discussed in detail yesterday. So the first thing is time management. So reading and planning 15 minutes. So in the first 15 minutes, you will read all tasks and identify the topics. You will identify relevant exhibits and note exhibit number on the respective answer sheet. And then you decide which question to start with. All these three tasks will be done in the first 15 minutes. Okay. Then drafting is full three hours we will follow 1.8 minutes per mark. You will stop drafting and move to next question if allowed time is up. And you can always come back and complete earlier question if left with some time in the end. Very, very important for SBL that you have a very brutal control on time management. Do not fall in the time trap. The moment you fall in a time trap, you're gone, okay? Linking with the exhibit is another challenge. All your answers have to be linked with the scenario as you just saw in our project initiation practice questions. You can copy paste important information from exhibit and the pre seen material on the respective answer sheet. Start your point with statement of fact copied from the exhibit and pre seen material and then elaborate about its impact on the business. This is exactly what we did in the PID question. We started with a statement of fact and then talked about the impact on the business and three to four lines or sentences is more than enough for one point. Do not go beyond this, otherwise your time management will not happen. Number of points, this is very simple. We've done it many times. Normal question, total marks divided by two. Weakness and recommendation question, total marks divided by four. Risk and recommendation question, total marks divided by four and try to give one extra point in each question, but subject to time availability. Do not overrun the time in order to give extra point, then leave it. Guys, can you stop chatting uh, between yourself for a few minutes? Format of your answer, prepare skeleton of the answer before you attempt that question. We did that in PID. We started with the format. We gave some headings. Use information from the scenario to start your point. Adopt paragraph, paragraph style of writing, three to four sentences max. Give subheadings for each point. 
use tabular format for weakness recommendation type questions nil or minimum use of models so we actually did all this in the pid so it maybe it sounds a lot when we read this but in real it's not that difficult once you are into practice it will happen in less than 60 seconds okay lastly bouncer question attempt this question in the last the most difficult question you must push it to the last you can use search find option on the cb platform to look for some related information and but this one do not use entire allowed time in this question save 10 15 minutes and use it to add more points to your other questions in order to get extra mark all this will come through practice okay if you don't practice these techniques you will not be able to do it in your exam day any questions on techniques okay good what are the various formats you should be very hands-on with all these formats we've discussed the formats in yesterday's class especially uh, in your Ma september paper make sure that you are familiar with business case format the contents of a business case and the contents of pid okay but we covered this in today's lecture Professional skills, when it says evaluation, include both pros and cons. If it says analysis, identify or investigate reasons from the exhibit. Communication means proper format, keeping in mind the addressee and your role, the tone of your answer. Commercial acumen means don't sound like an accountant. Uh, just talk about revenues, competition, IT and skepticism ask question disagree challenge and probe now there are certain issues with the cbe software sometimes the copy paste function from the mouse may not work okay copy paste is a very important function because we will copy paste some important information from the exhibits in our answer sheet, right? But sometimes when you do um, use your mouse, it doesn't work. The another alternative is use control C for copy and control V for paste. So if your mouse is not working, then you can select control C, go to your answer sheet, control V, okay? During exam, the software can hang or some feature might not work. For example, highlighter might not work. Okay. Press refresh and it will resume. Sometimes the bold, the highlighting is not working or your screen is freezed. Maybe you call the marker and show them or you refresh the screen, it will automatically work the third issue which some students face is software might automatically close 10 to 15 minutes before the time so if it is a three hour and 15 minutes paper sometimes the cb platform submits the closes the software and submits the paper 15 minutes 20 minutes before the ending time you might not be able to complete the paper right in that case, please apply for mitigation circumstances through your MyACCA portal immediately after the exam if you feel you were disadvantaged. Okay, got it? The actual CBE platform is slightly different from the CBE practice platform. Okay, the practice platform which we are using is slightly different from the actual CB platform in the exam. There are very minor differences like, you know, there's toolbar, there's some difference. So just have a look at it. There's a whole video on the ACCA's website. 
in which they identify what are those minor differences, but nothing to worry about. As you have already given CB before in any other subject, it's almost the same. Now, this is a study plan for self-study students, okay? Those students who are not planning to take any class, they want to do self-study. This is a study plan for self-study students. You just have four weeks. So watch the top 25 topics video. Read the top 25 topics handout. Watch a couple of my previous webinars if you have time. But then more importantly, this should take 20% of your time. 80% of the time should be here. 80% of your time should be spent here. Practice the following questions on CBE platform. Do these questions as practice. And then after that, once you have good grip, do three mock exams under strict exam conditions and have it marked. These are the three which you should do under time-based mock, okay? So this is a comprehensive list of the study plan for self-study students. Those of you who are already enrolled with me, either in regular batch, reset batch, revision or crash batch, I will be doing all this with you in the live class. You don't need to do anything on your own. I will be managing all this in the live class. Okay, but this is only for self-study students. Please, all of you, paid students as well as self-study students, stay away from book and revision kit. Why? Because number one, 50% paper is common sense. Number two, it's only four weeks left. So you don't have the time to go through the books and kits. And in SBL, practice is more important than theoretical knowledge. Just attend live classes, use my top 25 video and notes and practice, practice, practice. This is what the global prize winners also said, right? 20% time on theory, 80% time on practice, and they never touched the book or the kit. They just use all the past papers on the CBE platform. So please don't deviate from this. All right, so there was a lot of confusion. So these are the courses available for September attempt. These are the options I am offering for paid batches, right? So number one, you can join my revision drafting classes, which are starting from 8th of August. Okay. It's very comprehensive, exam focused, practice focused, and it includes one mock script checking. It includes the entire workshop on pre scene material, and it includes the grand revision. And the investment is $100 and PKR for Pakistan students. So this is the best one, I think, for you. And this is the schedule of the revision classes, very intense. The other option is if you don't want to enroll in any of my revision batch, then and if you just want to do a mock exam and checking, that is also possible. So I will be having a global mock exam on August 20th at 4 p.m. That mock will be checked by me. So if you want to get your mock checked, then you attend the global mock on August 20th, and then I will check it and give you feedback. Okay. This, the investment is $35 only for one mock and checking. The third option is workshop on pre-scene material. As I mentioned yesterday, I will uh, spend like two, two days on discussing the pre-scene material for September attempt. So it will be a two-day workshop to be held on 29th and 30th August evening. It will include detailed discussion and understanding of the case study. And you remember the case study is like 10, 12 pages long. 
I will make summary pointers for quick revisions. And I will also discuss possible questions and their answers, various scenario buildings and what ifs, things like that. Uh, investment is $40 and for Pakistan based, it's PKR 6K. Okay. So if you have enrolled in my regular batch, reset batch, or the re uh, revision batch, then all this is included in your package. So you don't need to re-register. This is only for those who have not, who do not plan to enroll at all, and you just want to do the pre-scene, then you can enroll for this. In the last, I would like to remind this technique which has really worked for high scorers that when you are doing SBL, please imagine that you are the CFO of that company. It will automatically upgrade your confidence and your way of thinking, okay? And please imagine that you are explaining to the board and, and you are the CFO. Start practicing this mind game from now and you will automatically see good results in a couple of weeks time. That's my global WhatsApp group. That's my contact details. And I think that's about it from my end. All the best CFOs. So I hope you found this two day webinar really helpful, especially those who are giving it for the first time. And uh, if you have any questions, I can take some questions now, or you have my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp me in case you have any confusion later on, okay? So the recording of today and yesterday will be uploaded hopefully by tomorrow on YouTube as well as the paid portals. And I will share the handout of yesterday and today on all the various groups, all right? Just, I will share it shortly, but tonight. Timing of revision class, it's all the schedule is mentioned in the handout. Um, you can have a look at that. Usma, if you are a self-study student, then you will have to do it on your own and time yourself on your own. Mazar, if you are draft, struggling with drafting, the only way is practice. There is no way you can improve your drafting unless you practice, right? So I suggest you join my revision batch because it is 100% drafting focused uh, class. The revision class will start at 7 p.m. It is not possible to start at 8 p.m. because each class is approximately four to five hours long. And if we start at eight o'clock, we will end after midnight and next day is the working day. So it's, it's not possible. Yaku, please don't ask questions which I've already mentioned clearly. Please stay away from book and kit. Don't you understand simple English? Faiza, I honestly don't know. You can ask this question on the global WhatsApp group. Yes, the revision classes will also be recorded so that in case you join late or you'd watch it the next day, the recording will be available for each and every revision class as well. Yes, Nidhi, if you are confident, then yes. Usma, your problem is that you need to join the revision batch. There is no other way. You need some help. No, Tayaba, pre-seen does not include mock. It's just pre-seen. It's on the very last, very near to the exam. I will share the class program, the revision schedule on the group as well. Okay. Akshay, just forget about it. Hmm? Yes, you should revise the top 25 by 8 of August so that you're able to do the case studies with me. Guys, those of you who are struggling with drafting, please, I think you guys need help. 
you will not be able to improve drafting overnight. So I honestly, you know, uh, sincerely suggest that you join my revision batch so that you are able to improve your drafting. I will not be able to provide you one-on-one -on -one help, right? So what the study plan up to 8th of August is just revise the top 25 topics and watch June web, September webinar. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining this webinar. I really appreciate some of the questions were excellent. Some of the students were really smart. And I hope to see you soon, either in the revision class or on WhatsApp, right? All right, guys, signing off. Thank you and best of luck and bye-bye.